Hello people, how are you? Welcome. My name is Adam. This is Memento Mori. I hope you're all doing well. Uh, this is the first episode of The Personal Library, okay? And this is going to be an ongoing series of videos where I focus on the books that carry me. I'm not huge on, on ranking books and the idea of having the ultimate, you know, favorite book of all time has always been a little cheap to me. Um, you know, I've always preferred to think in terms of what are the books that will remain on my shelves, you know, in one form or another for the rest of my life? You know, God willing that I have a home and, and a place to, to shelve them. Uh, what are the books that will carry me? And, you know, I certainly, I don't keep books that I don't like or I have no interest in, but I will say that the majority of books I own, you know, aren't necessarily books that I know for sure will be with me uh, for the long haul. <laughs> you know, a few examples here I picked up. Uh, the, I just picked these out at random. Uh, but we have The Plague by Albert Camus. Uh, we have By Night in Chile by Roberto Bolaño. Uh, and we have The Adventures of Cavalier and Clay by Michael Chabon. Uh, these are, are three books that I've read and that I enjoyed. And I'm happy to own them. I would like to return to them one day. But I can't say with any certainty that, you know they will be with me forever. I would not necessarily feel a void if they didn't exist as objects within my home, right? So the goal with this series is to focus on the books that will, uh, the books that have and will carry me through the rest of my life. And we're gonna start the series out with a true classic, uh, which is Pilgrim at Teaker Creek uh, by Annie Dillard. It was first published in 1974. Uh, Pilgrim at Tinker Creek is a narrative nonfiction containing a series of, of various contemplative writing uh, on nature and on life, uh, especially relating to Dillard's surroundings living at Tinker Creek um, along the Blue Ridge Mountains in Virginia. It reads very much like a journal or a collection of essays, uh, though Dillard herself has, has expressively said that they are not. I recently revisited Tinker Creek and uh, man, it's a book I continue to return to whenever I need to be refueled. And, you know, to those who think that nature writing and nature memoirs is not their thing, I urge you to pick Dillard up uh, because you will love this book, okay? And this is not a work just about, you know, bubbling brooks and the, you know, the changing of leaves, okay? Even though there is a bit of that in it. Um, this is a book of science and nature and solitude, poetry, uh, reading, uh, so much. Dillard approaches nature like a blind person seen for the first time, something she describes as seeing the light in the trees. Early in the work, she discusses a book that she's read, uh, and Dillard talks a lot about books throughout, you know, this whole piece, but uh, she talks about a book relating to people who were born blind and through, you know, a surgical operation can now see and their first experiences with sight. And in one case, there is a young girl who has had cataract eye surgery. And afterwards, when they take off the blindfold, the first thing this young girl sees is the lights in the tree, okay? And Dillard relates that to her own relationship with nature and the idea of seeing nature for what it truly is for the first time. Uh, this is a passage from the end of uh, chapter two. Um, Dillard says, uh, when her doctor took her bandages off and led her into the garden, the girl who was no longer blind saw the tree with the lights in it. It was for this tree I searched for through the peach orchards of summer, in the forests of fall and down winter and spring for years. Then one day I was walking along Tinker Creek, thinking of nothing at all, and I saw the tree with the lights in it. I saw the backyard cedar where the morning doves roost, charged and transfigured, each cell buzzing with flame. I stood on the grass with the lights in it, grass that was holy fire, utterly focused and utterly dreamed. It was less like seeing than like being for the first time seen, knocked breathless by a powerful glance. The flood of fire abated, but I'm still spending the power. Gradually, the lights went out in the cedar, the colors died, the cells unflamed and disappeared. I was still ringing. I had been my whole life a bell and never knew it until at that moment I was lifted and struck. I have since only very rarely seen the trees with the lights in it. The vision comes and goes, mostly goes, but I live for it. For the moment when the mountains open and a new light roars in spate through the crack and the mountains slam. 
And man, yeah, that's what this book is. Uh, you know, it is the light in the trees. And it's, it's there for me whenever I need it. You know, the relationship that we each hold with nature is, is such a personal thing, I think. And even though my, my own may differ from that of Annie Dillard's, through her experience at you know, Tinker Creek, I can in some ways connect to my own. And that's such a gift. Um, I, I love this book. Um, now and forever, always within my personal library, Pilgrim at Tinker Creek, Annie Dillard. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.